I always wanted to be a healer. When I see suffering, I want to do something to alleviate it. Over the last 41 years, working in healthcare, I have understand that we need to be audacious, social entrepreneurs with limitless optimism to provide quality care to vulnerable. Let me tell you how. I was born in Rwanda during the colonial times when health of Rwanda was important only to perform work assigned by the colonialists. In 1958, my family decided to go to Belgium for my father to join medical education. Little time after, the first killings of the Tutsi started, 1959. My parents were devastated. For me, I was too young and well protected to understand what was going on. But the adult surrounding me decided that we will never talk again about Rwanda in my family. It was too painful. Later, as a young adult, I pursue my dream and start medical education. I was fascinated by the magical sound of the first cry of a baby. And this pushed me to choose pediatrics and later specialized in neonatology. I practiced medicine in a wide range of settings. Belgian hospital, French hospital, clinics in the rainforest forest of Gabon. And then 1994, April, the genocide against the Tutsi happened. Within 100 days, a million souls were lost, and the suffering was beyond belief. The country was in ruin. In 1996, my family returned in my destroyed homeland. Simply say it was a nightmare. Personally, emotionally, and professionally. As a mother, I was faithful for my two children. As a clinician, I was totally paralyzed by the broken health system that I found there. After working during a few days in the biggest hospital in Kigali, capital city, I was ready to pack back and return to Europe. But at that time in Rwanda, there was only two flights out of the country a week, and I was obliged to stay. And during that period, I reflected. Do I really want to run away or to face the problem? Should I return to my comfort zone in Europe or stand with my fellow Rwandan for a better tomorrow? So I have to say that the ultimate thought that took over my mind was, how would the vulnerable ever experience a better tomorrow if people that are the, have the most skills to contribute to the recovery don't contribute to it, like I was just about to do. And this call on my sense of social justice and the moral obligation that we all have to contribute to improve the world where we are. And I understand that my calling was to improve the care of children in the world that I was just starting to work in. Although I was frustrated, stressed, and exasperated by the circumstances I was finding myself, I turned all this in positive energy that make me run since.
Five years later, I received an unexpected call, and I was, it was an advisor of our president, and I was asked to run the National AIDS Control Commission. Four years later, as we were about to reach universal access for HIV, I was requested to focus beyond HIV and support the entire health sector as the permanent secretary to the Minister of Health. Three years later, I was honored to be appointed as the Minister of Health. But it was not easy. And in the beginning, I was very hesitant to leave my clinical work. But quickly, I embraced the opportunity to join the decision maker to fight the diseases that were devastated my homeland, killing women, children, especially HIV that took the life of so many bright, economically productive young souls that were needed to rebuild our country. So I say yes. And immediately I discovered that there were not enough infrastructure and very little money. So the first thing to do was to secure the money, and we did so like many countries, with the support of the global community. In parallel, we create transparent institutions to manage those funds and educate the staff to deal with this new system that we were creating. We were also, immediately, we reflect and start to decide that we need to create an equitable platform for service delivery across the country. For this, we leverage all resources and funds coming from our taxes and for development partners' money. And when we didn't have enough money, we came together during Umuganda, this last Saturday of each month, the country dedicated to community work and use our hands to build health centers. It was critical to rebuild the social capital that was totally destroyed with the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. It was also important that each Rwandan at all levels of leadership own the process of rebuilding the health sector. And this concerned politician, parliamentarian, Civil, civil society, community leaders, religious leaders, women and new, young leaders. We facilitate all those constituencies to have a say in the planning, the implementation, and all the steps, even monitoring and evaluation, we took to rebuild the Rwandan health sector. So we work together around one agenda that we build together. And together we decided that we are going to break financial barrier by creating a health insurance called Mutuelle de Santé, where people pay $5 per capita and per year, but totally free for the 25% poorest Rwandan. And the wealthiest part of the population, the 5%, pay $12 per capita. Today, more than 90% of Rwandans have a health insurance. All along, I apply the same principle. Rebuild trust with communities. Transparent management. Participatory process. Sound and good and fair partnerships. But above all, in all this, evidence-based policy, decision, strategy, action plan, monitoring, and evaluation. And we design policies to create that uniform and equitable platform of service delivery for Rwanda. It helps us to build this incredible cadre of 45,000 community health workers, three for each village. Two women, one man, elected by the community. And when their payers have selected them, the Ministry of Health come and educate them. They go 
to home, give advice, they diagnose malaria and treat it. Same for pulmonary infections and other common illness. And they give really good advice to their pair that trust them during Umuganda or during home visits. And because they are at the front line and they all have a phone, they are the first to alert us when there is a risk of outbreak at any part of the country. The Ministry of Health, the government of Rwanda, is immediately alert by one community or two community health workers. But with this phone, they, also, they are also the one calling for an ambulance when a pregnant woman approaching labor needs a transport. So, on top of that, thanks to the government of Rwanda investment in the health sector, there is one health center in each sector with nurses, one hospital in each district, and also one referral hospital in each city. The country still have a long way to go, but the framework is there. The equity agenda is there. We introduced technology, and this has helped mitigate the lack of skilled people and human resources in the management of the health sector. The health sector is managed with 13 software for things like procurement, staff deployment, infrastructure follow-up, equipment maintenance, and also epidemiologic and data collection for records and outbreak management. And through, throughout all level of care, we have brought equity by putting the same standards across the country and across services. This has allowed Rwanda to build a comprehensive health system that has helped us to tackle the major killer, such malaria, TB, and HIV, with the most equitable way we could have done it. For example, women are more affected than men by HIV across the world. We make sure that program and policies give them equal access. So we have more women on treatment than men. And with this approach, research has shown that we have better results in our HIV program than this country. While we have only, even not, $800 per capita, and you have seven, more than $70,000 per capita. I have learned a lot all those years. And I had the chance to work with great global health fighters, such as my friend Paul Farmer. Together, our collective work and decade of experience have allowed us to extract principle and new knowledge and create a new science of equitable service delivery. We want to share this knowledge. And for this, we have created a new university, the University of Global Health Equity. But coming back to my previous life, I want to say that everything we have done to build a health sector was with the intent to do the most with each dollar we spent, dollar from our taxes or dollar from development partner, with efficiency and efficacy. And of course, tolerance zero for corruption. You can imagine that this has brought me a lot of enemies. Mm -hmm. But I didn't care then. And I still don't care. And my reward is the thousand of smile of healthy children with a bright future because they are surrounded by a healthy health sector. 
And for those children, we have created a platform for immunization that gives the best rate, and this is a pediatrician talking to you, the best rate of vaccination on us. 11 vaccines for boys, 93% of our boys are vaccinated against 11 vaccines, and 93% of our girls against 12 because they have received HPV vaccine. We still don't have $800 per capita. We still don't have electricity in each corner of the country. This only proves you that when you have a limitless vision and will to do things, everything is possible, isn't it? Coming back to the new university we have created, to transfer such a type of knowledge, the know-how, how to do it, because the entire world has the same wish, the entire world has the same plan, but the, the know-how, how to do that, is what makes the difference, and it's what we teach. And this University of Global Health Equity is an initiative of Partner in Health and is located in rural Rwanda. The mission of this university is to create a new generation of leaders who understand how to transform ideals such as access and equity in practical and tangible realities on the ground and in the life of people. We train clinicians and health managers and beyond to apply the principle of leaving no one out of services and serve the vulnerable in remote area, in rural area, where we have to acknowledge the majority of our brothers and sisters in the world are living. And we equipped our students with the skills to transform the worst situation so that they are not lost or paralyzed like I was in 1996 when I faced a broken health system and I have no clue how to fix it. Building a health sector is not easy. And, it's, and it takes time. And it, somehow it is simple. It's not about how much money you invest. It is about how equitable the care is and how good this care is. It is about training an army of fighters for universal health coverage. It's about training not only joiners or followers, but leaders. Above all, it's about not forgetting that what we fight for is the human right to health. And as I told you in the beginning, it's about having limitless optimism, vision, passion, love, and compassion to reach with quality care the most vulnerable. And by the way, it is the only way we can reach our commitment to the sustainable development. Thank you.